प्लीज लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब फॉर मोर वीडियोस थैंक यू वी नाउ कम टू द डबल बिशप चेकमेट एंड दिस इज शोस द पावर ऑफ द बिशप्स एट टॉप लेवल most grandmasters consider the bishop to be stronger than the knight and you can see why with the examples we're going to study in this video this is a very basic position here and it's white to play and i think most of you should should be able to see how white can checkmate look for all checks there's only one check in this case it is checkmate i would say this is quite similar to bowden's mate or the crisscross mate except it's not a crisscross both bishops are pointing the same way with a double bishop mate and here bishop to b2 shows the awesome power of the bishops on these long diagonals that king cannot escape it's in checkmate it's the end of the game and even when you get used to some of these patterns they might not always end in checkmate but if you realize how strong pieces can work together like in this example they might help you in the middle game in the ending even in the opening so again it's all about pattern recognition recognizing recognizing these patterns and let's have a look at a case of this checkmate from an actual game. I now thought it would be a good idea to look at a whole game and to see how we can arrive at this double bishop checkmate only on move 19. I'm going to go through the moves fairly quickly with minimum explanation, but we'll have a look at the main points just to see how you can build up these patterns, how they actually work in real games. So white played e4, e5 and now d4, the Danish gambit and uh, if you look in the archive, I've done a video on this of white. It's a very interesting idea. The point is after pawn takes d4 c3 and after pawn takes c3 bishop to c4 and we get this very strong bishop attacking black's achilles heel and we're hoping here and this is why I wanted to include this game from the start that if black takes on b2 we go bishop takes b2 and already you can see this idea of the two bishops working together so this is just reinforcing the point i'm making that when you know patterns they don't they're not always used in checkmate ideas they can be used in the opening in other areas but you've got to recognize the power of pieces working together how they should work together how you can coordinate them together now the actual game continued knight to f6 we had some development knight to f3 bishop c5 knight takes c3 white is going for quick development here for pawn pawn to d6 castles castles and now white starts an attack knight to g5 aiming for the archilles heel h6 and now we take on e5 and here pawn to e5 and like i said we're not going to look at this with maximum commentary but we're just showing the moves very quickly to just get a feel of how we get to the position white clearly attacking white the one pressurizing the opponent the knight has to move because otherwise we take the queen knight to g4 and now here comes eddie the e pawn e6 and this blocks the bishop's defense of the knight black starts a counter attack queen to h4 quite a dangerous idea threatening checkmate on h2 but we can take the rook with check pawn takes rook check now the king doesn't really want to go to h8 here because then eddie the eagle queens and becomes queen eddie the eagle so king to f8 covering the queen in square white needs to defend h2 bishop to f4 stopping queen takes h2 mate instead black goes knight takes f2 very unclear position the knight is attacking the queen the knight is threatening to move with a discovered check this is what we call i say an ambush against the white king the queen goes to e2 knight g4 ambush check comes in king to h1 and now bishop to d7 because let's see what white's threatening here well white is threatening queen to e8 check bishop to d7 and now white brings in his last piece rook on a to e1 again renewing the threat of queen to e8 check black stops that with knight to c6 now black is defending that square with a number of pieces but here in this rather strange and aggressive position white can force checkmate in a very beautiful way and what do you need to do to work this checkmate out well i really think the bishop on c4 from the opening has been a great piece but also we should be looking at the other white pieces nearly all the white pieces doing a great job the queen and both the rooks are really cutting down towards the black king and you should be calculating checks and captures here let's look at checks first pause the video now to see if you can work out how to kind of use this double bishops and that's the final kind of structure you're looking for to arrange the double bishop checkmate even though it looks impossible at the moment well what we need to do 
and this is the kind of thing that you should be getting sort of you know in your mind with the patterns if you can remove the f pawn so if you can't see the checkmate just try this just you know you know point to your opponent and say look at that it's superman over you know and point point to the other side of the room when he's not looking you know remove the pawn from the board actually remember don't do this it's called cheating but just imagine you can remove that pawn from the board or maybe sneeze and knock it over by accident i shouldn't really be telling these techniques but imagine this pawn wasn't on the board if it wasn't on the board we could go bishop takes d6 with a double check and a checkmate so how can we get rid of the pawn on f7 we give up our queen queen to e8 check we can still play this move and the point is it doesn't matter what black recaptures in the game he took with a rook now we get rid of our f pawn so we queen on e8 black cannot take with the king because of the rook on e1 has to take with the bishop and now it's checkmate in one move bishop d6 and here the power of the two bishops this time the rook is involved create a beautiful checkmate but really the bishop pair can be a tremendous attacking force if used in the right way and uh, i hope you can create something like this at least once in your lifetime